Greetings, everybody. Maximus here with a little peek behind the curtain of things that are yet to come. But before today's video, I just wanted to drop in and say that while I had finished it and got it all recorded and ready to go for today, meaning Saturday, August 24th, NASA announced they're going to have a press conference sometime today. So you're going to find out either before, during, or after you watch this video what they're going to do to bring Bush and Sonny home. But either way, that plays in nicely to today's video because we're going to talk about the dangers still involved in bringing them home, especially if they have to come home without any spacesuits on at all. So enjoy the video, and I'll see you soon. You are watching Maximus Aviation. So as we've discussed at great length here on the channel already, as NASA continues to try and make lemonade out of its space lemon, the Boeing Starliner. NASA just can't catch a break as it continues to get hit with one new devastating punch after the other. However, many of these punches have been and continue to be self-inflicted by both Boeing and NASA. However, now comes word of yet another reason NASA has tried to keep it under wraps as to why it's taking so long to return Butch and Sonny to their families in one piece. But this latest revelation starts to paint a much clearer picture of the antiquated thinking of NASA versus the new age out of the box thinking of companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. But for more than two months now, most of us in the world have been asking NASA why not just send up the SpaceX Crew Dragon to rescue Butch and Sonny. It seems so simple and obvious. Yet NASA hasn't made that decision, nor will they apparently anytime soon. But why? Well, as I said, the truth has finally emerged because, well, for starters, you know, the NASA spacesuits that Williams and Wilmore wear while on the Starliner mission? Well, apparently the NASA suits aren't compatible with the SpaceX Crew Dragon suits. No, you heard that right. They're not interchangeable. Something you would think a first-year basket weaving major would have considered, let alone a real rocket scientist. So as a result of this remarkable blunder, that means if Butch and Sonny were to have to return on a SpaceX capsule in an emergency, they have to do so not wearing a spacesuit. But don't worry, I hear you out there saying, Hey Maximus, that's just crazy talk. You can't be right. All right, don't take my word for it. Let's ask Deputy Associate Space Operations Mission Administrator Joe Montalbano, who on a recent conference call said these words from his very own NASA mouth, that the astronauts possibly could return unsuited, yes, without spacesuits, in the next Space Crew X Dragon mission should an emergency arise. Wait. Did he say if an emergency arises? Wasn't this already an emergency? And did he say unsuited, as in just in their Adidas Jim Bro tracksuits? Yep, that's what he said. Montalbano said that extra SpaceX flight suits will be sent with the Crew 9 mission possibly in September, but he admitted that spacesuit compatibility between the two vessels of rival companies is a problem. From the standpoint of the spacesuits, the NASA deputy explained that they are, quote, really not interchangeable. Montalbano explained you can't have a Boeing suit in a SpaceX or a SpaceX suit in a Boeing vehicle. So that would not be the plan, he added. He said if the Starliner undocks and there's only Crew Dragon there, they would have to come home unsuited in the Dragon. However, if there is no emergency, once Crew 9 gets there, we will have suits. He said at which point they would come home suited on Crew 9. Well, it's good to know if Crew 9 gets there, then Butch and Sonny won't need to don their Russian track suits. Wow, so given this latest revelation, that's a pretty big detail to leave out all this time, don't you think? Well, as I'm sure you're all well aware, spacesuits used during launch and re-entry known as intravehicular suits are vital to survival. They're not just for guys like the awesome Adam Savage to use for cosplay. They protect against sudden cabin pressure loss and help regulate temperature. Without them, the astronauts would be much more vulnerable if anything went wrong on the ride back through the fiery 5,000 degree Fahrenheit or 2,800 degree Celsius re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. But Maximus, you ask, then why the hell wouldn't NASA and SpaceX have interchangeable spacesuits in the first place? Well, I'm glad you asked, because according to the firstpost.com, the reason behind this suit incompatibility goes back to NASA's commercial crew program, which funded the development of both the Starliner and Crew Dragon. 
But unlike past space programs where NASA was involved in every detail, this program gave Boeing and SpaceX more freedom to design their spacecraft, as long as they met NASA's broad requirements and safety standards. But this also meant that making sure that both companies' systems had the same spacesuits that could be interchangeable, yeah, that didn't really make the checklist. It wasn't a priority. Yeah, spacesuit compatibility was not considered a problem. What's that you say? This is very interesting. You want to hear more? Well, I will tell you. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, the Crew Dragon Crew 8 capsule currently docked at the ISS is only configured to carry four crew members. It was initially designed to hold seven. However, it was reconfigured to carry only four astronauts prior to their last flight. So even if NASA could get compatible suits for Williams and Wilmore, the Crew Dragon isn't configured to support them. However, this additional punch in the face only serves to highlight the ongoing struggles with Boeing's Starliner program. After investing billions of dollars in the capsule's development, seeing the astronauts return on a SpaceX spacecraft would be a significant setback for Boeing and raise more questions about the future of the Starliner program. Hmm. And to that I say who gives a crap how Boeing or NASA looks after this? Just get Butch and Sonny home safe and more importantly alive. I can't believe this is even a question. Yet, NASA is still trying to find a way to save face for Boeing and come hell or high water. NASA seems really bent to want to use the Starliner. Which I'm sure a picture of the Starliner capsule will look just great on the memorial plaque next to the Apollo 1, Challenger, and Shuttle Columbia memorials at the cemetery. Okay, let me step back a minute. I apologize for my snarky sounding attitude, but are you as frustrated as me in this whole situation? Let me know down below. Let me tighten it up and be more professional for the rest of the video. So that brings us to a stunning admission by Boeing Starliner program manager Mark Nappy, who this week told the New York Times that, quote, he's not surprised that the spacecraft is stuck up there. And now several months later, he said he regrets not managing expectations up front, saying that I think we all knew it was going to go longer than that. We didn't spend a lot of time talking about how much longer, but I think it's my regret, Nappy said, that we didn't publicly say we're going to stay up there until we get everything done that we want to go do. And there it is. Okay, so let me see if I got this right. So what Boeing is admitting to there is that they knew they were sending Butch and Sonny on a risky mission on a defective Boeing product that never should have been launched in the first place. And now, after the fact, he and Boeing are really sorry. Hmm. Now, where have I heard that before? Let me think. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. So now, in addition to the Frankenmax, we can add the Frankenliner. However, seriously, in the end, there are only four ways this whole situation will end. One... And the best option is they wait until Crew Dragon 9 arrives in September with new uniforms. And Bush and Sundance come home in relative safety. Or two, the long shot roll of the dice and somehow they survive re-entry in Starliner. However, all the remaining options are bad. One scenario is the Starliner could become stranded in space with malfunctioning thrusters by missing the re-entry angle and skip off the atmosphere and bounce back into Earth's orbit with only a 96-hour supply of oxygen left. Then they become a grisly, continuously orbiting memorial reminder of Boeing and NASA's failure until finally, after time, in the pull of Earth's gravity, they will return to Earth, no longer alive, thankfully, when the capsule burns up on re-entry. Another possibility is that the spacecraft might fail to re-enter the atmosphere altogether due to a faulty alignment. This would result in the capsule remaining in space indefinitely, as it would not be able to descend properly again with only 96 hours of oxygen left. And they will drift for all eternity out into outer space, behind Elon Musk's red Tesla Roadster. Again, as a permanent reminder to generations to come of NASA and Boeing's failure. And finally, the worst and most dire scenario involves the spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere at too steep an angle, causing the spacecraft to burn up before reaching the surface. With whatever pieces do finally reach the Earth, well, they will be entombed at the empty Titan missile silo at NASA in Florida, along the Challenger and Columbia spacecraft. 
Well, in closing, all I can say is hang on Bush and Sonny, and hopefully you two will have enough supplies on hand to last until September, when Crew Dragon arrives with your new spacesuits, and you can finally get home. But in conclusion, there's a glimmer of hope. Because breaking news, NASA has scheduled a press conference for Saturday, August 24, where they are said to finally have made their decision, and let's all hope and pray it's the right one. As always, I deeply and sincerely thank you for stopping by my little YouTube channel and sometimes putting up with my snarkiness, but I think it's for a good reason. And if you liked the video, I hope you'd give it a thumbs up and even consider subscribing. And until next time, hug somebody you love. And remember, yeah, this is Maximus.